Today we're gonna to be doing it on the Workhorse Pits 1975, but I recommend doing this on any smoker you have, and definitely uh, if you have a pellet grill, you're gonna to wanna to do it on that because that heat box underneath, the, with the fans going and everything, can really move things around. So what's amazing about doing the bun test is that you can really see where the hot and cold spots are on your smoker and that's great when you're cooking different meats at the same time and you want to move things around based on that or if you're cooking a lot let's say pork butts and one seems to be cooking a little slower than the other one seems to be cooking faster you'll know exactly where you can move them around in order to get even cooking across all the pork butts and have them come out somewhere around the same time. So uh, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna do the bun test. I'm not gonna put it on the top rack uh, because some people don't have the top rack and the top rack is pretty even except for by the firebox. So uh, today I'm only gonna do it on the main cooking rack. Now, normally if you wanna check temps, a lot of people use something like this. This is the Thermoworks Signal. Uh, you can run four probes at once. You can run ambient temp probes. You can run internal probes and you can kind of see the temperature across the grates. But for me, the bun test really helps out in getting a real world feel. So you have a nice thickness on them. You can see which ones are cooking faster, more, are they burning on the bottom? Um, you know, some people use toast, but to me, toast is a little thin. It doesn't really give you that same feel as the rising. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna run it with the dampers fully open and the firebox cracked probably about an inch, which is what I see most people, uh, how they tend to smoke on an offset smoker. So I'm gonna run it like that. Some things to consider when you do run it wide open, you're gonna have a lot more draw coming through, which means that heat source from the firebox is gonna move a lot further into the smoke chamber. So depending on how we do today, we're gonna to wanna to probably cut that back, you know, to obviously give us more of an even cooking space, but we'll see what happens. All right, so today we're gonna to be using uh, dinner rolls by Pillsbury. You can use any type of roll. I like to get a thicker one. It just kind of mimics, you know, what we're doing. So if you're cooking ribs or you're cooking chicken or anything else, uh, you actually get a little bit of thickness. So it's kind of a, more of a real world uh, test. So we're gonna run these at about 350 degrees on the smoker, again, bottom rack. And we're gonna put a water pan in like we were cooking any other smoke. There's no reason to put a, a biscuit right next to the firebox. Obviously that's gonna, burn right up, so we're not gonna do that. All right, so the biscuits are on, we're running at 350 degrees, and I'm gonna be completely honest, I should have had my wife break those biscuits down because I suck at it, so uh, some might be a little bigger, some might not even look like a biscuit when we're done, but I think we'll still hopefully get the feel of what we're aiming for here, so uh, just bear with me on the biscuits, don't laugh at me, don't bash me in the comments, I'm not a biscuit guy, I tried my best, but uh, next time, my wife's gonna do it for me. So it might be a little hard to tell this early with the light, but obviously it looks like up front here, we're getting a little more browning than the rest. But all in all, I mean, this is what I love about the Workhorse Pits 1975, if you look at it. I mean, every one of these is cooking pretty evenly, which is amazing. You don't really see that on a smoker. It's usually up front here. You're gonna get a lot more browning, a lot more burnt pieces. The bottom's gonna be burnt. So we're gonna let these run for a little longer and then we're gonna check them out. We'll see how the bottoms look. All right, so I'd say these are about done. So let's just take a peek at some of these and see what they're looking like. So these are the ones right up here in front of the firebox. We have the water pan like usual, like I said. Uh, so this is probably where I would normally put meat on the smoker regardless uh, if we were doing a bun test or not. So let's just check this out. So this one actually looks really good. And I, don't, I don't know if you can see from this angle. Obviously we have one giant biscuit over there, but they actually all look really, really good and pretty consistent. I mean, obviously these ones up in the front are a tiny bit darker and you know you can see from this one, the front of it, that's closest to the firebox. That's obviously getting uh, a little bit more and it's, you know, burning on the bottom. It's a little crispy. Uh, so let's take one from back here and just check as well. Yeah, so this is a, is a perfect, perfect bun. So we got one there. So I'd say the bottom up here, obviously very crispy. Uh, same thing's gonna be with these as well. Ooh, it's hot. And then some of these right here in the middle, again, perfectly cooked top and bottom a little more to the front obviously because the fire is coming this way and then let's check back here dead center uh so this is actually the same thing so normally in offset smokers you see a little more heat closer to the smokestack but actually these are cooking really well uh so i'm actually a little surprised at these uh but everything else is is pretty much consistent with what i was expecting so let's take a look at this giant big one same thing a little less just because of the size of it but uh all in all i'd say yeah these are a little crispy I mean, it's a good biscuit, but definitely more than these. So obviously it's just the standard, what we were expecting uh, from a cook and from a biscuit test. So all in all, uh, I, I think the results are, are pretty close to what I was expecting besides these back ones. So uh, that's just something to consider if you're moving 
meat around and, and these are cooking more, you can hop them to the back, move the ones from the back to the front and let them cook a little bit more evenly. All right, so that's it for the bun test on the Workhorse Pits 1975. As you can see, and as you saw in my review video, which I'll post up here in case you didn't see it, uh, this smoker is just phenomenal. It cooks evenly uh, across the board and it's just an amazing smoker. So if you're in the market for a smoker and you wanna spend between four and $5,000 on a good smoker, uh, the Workhorse Pits is definitely the one. And as I've said in the past too, if you're looking for something a little cheaper, because I know a lot of people are coming to these videos looking to find a smoker or comparing smokers. The Old Country Pitch G2 Smoker, I'll post it up here as well, uh, is again, just a phenomenal smoker in the $2,000 range. So that's it. I hope you uh, got some value out of this. If there's any videos you want to see in the future, uh, just like this one that you asked for, just let me know and I'll definitely do my best to get one out there. So uh, if you did like this video, if you got any value from it, if you're liking what I'm doing on the channel, just consider subscribing, hit that like button and turn on the notifications. All right, last thing to do like we always do. That's actually a really good biscuit. I might just start smoking them. All right, I'll check you in the next one.